Hi everyone. Welcome to Ruby Tuesday. I'm Natasha Glino, your host at the Co Cozy Cushion here on YouTube. I come here each week to talk about things that can help benefit you in your life that will also help you build spiritual strength and help you move differently through our world and that's really important to me because our world doesn't breathe enough our world doesn't stop and take time away from the chaotic mess that's in their minds that transfers into their bodies and into their souls and keep them all mucked up and sometimes in a spiral that's very unhealthy, very unstable, and very weak. And that can lead people to some of the scariest places that you can go on planet Earth. And it can lead to some of the most extraordinary illnesses as well. So it always makes me sad when I see people living in a spiral of unhealthy behavior and an unwillingness to take responsibility for their own lives. And sometimes we are led by our emotions and oftentimes our environments and circumstance. So it's very human to get stuck and as an intuitive empath with psychic ability. It's so easy to see that we all need to get back to the very simple things in life, like giving a shit. I never want you to take for granted how divinely beautiful it is to have someone in your life, no matter who they are, that really cares about you and is your cheerleader in life. And they are rare and they are to be honored. So that's why I do Ruby Tuesday is because my friend Ruby was my greatest, one of my greatest, I have a few, so I'm very, very lucky, but one of my greatest cheerleaders in life. And Ruby had some challenges in life and when I was willing to utilize my abilities and my magic in her environment it was so obvious that it changed so that's what makes being a coach and a mentor in the spiritual realm doing readings for you and spending time with you is is such a gift to me so I like to share these Ruby Tuesdays between you and I is an opportunity to get to know each other better. So today I want to talk about breathing, of course, because I really have an intuitive desire to teach everyone how to breathe and pause and take a moment in life. Because when we pause, it can change so many things. Most importantly, it changes your ability to cope and manage your emotions, thoughts, feelings, and actions. So that's why I encourage breath work on a regular basis and why I absolutely love teaching it. When we learn to breathe, we can also breathe new life and new energy throughout our whole body system, every chakra every bone, every cell. We can bring oxygen to our minds and our brains, our lungs and our hearts, and they can expand and heal when we breathe into them and we learn how to breathe. So I wanted to remind you friends that our breath is the first responder in your life. Let me say it again. Your breath is 
your first responder in life. So what that means is, is there's so many people showing up at our hospitals in quite dire situations because they've let the spiral of life consume so much of their body. They feel weighted down like they have cement in their bones and bodies and our hearts have practically stopped beating because of the lack of oxygen from holding our breath, holding ourselves hostage in our illness and not doing anything to help ourselves. So when I can help you breathe, from where you are, how you are, things will get better and better every day in every way. So breath and breath work is vitally important to, for making all of our lives better. For ourselves, we feel better when we breathe deeply into our body and when we breathe deeply into our body, we remember that we are not our thoughts, we are not our emotions. Oftentimes we are not even our feelings. And when we stop and take a breath and step away from holding ourselves hostage to our emotions, our thoughts, it can really make our lives so much more easier and gentler and we become more awake and alive and our heart beats better and we have more movement. So some of you that have been following me for a little while, it's very important to me to share that movement in our bodies, in our hearts, minds, and spirits is indeed medicine. Every time we very gently roll our shoulders back, we put our arms high and reach in the sky and we reach out with our hands, our fingers wide open. We open energy from Mother Earth to come directly to us because we're letting her know in yoga poses and stretching to meet the morning sun that we're alive and grateful that we've had another day here on Earth. When we don't breathe, we forget that we're light. When we don't breathe, we hold ourselves hostage to our emotions and our illness. And it's a really, really sad place, you know, to be. And that's my gift I want to share on my YouTube channel. I want to create a sacred space like I have here my little tiny office in my house so I want to give a shout out to my family who recognize that I'm really into doing these videos that got me actually it's a, it's a celebratory day really because I've got my tripod here that now holds my tablet perfectly um, so I'm just learning new lighting techniques from being able to stabilize my tablet with a tripod and so this is my first video for Ruby Tuesday so I'm able to show up yay that doesn't always happen and I get to breathe and move with you and encourage you to stand up if you have two legs that will hold your body weight I encourage you to stand and move as much as possible in a way that your body can process. I don't want you sitting stagnant in life, no matter where you are in life. That's my mission, is to share my life about movement and breath and spiritual strength. So another thing that's important to me is water. So I'm just going to have a quick drink here. And if you're thirsty and you're still tuning in after this nine minutes, please go get a drink if you want one. If you're going to stay, I'll probably talk for another 10 minutes in this video today. It's another thing that brings us spiritual strength. Building spiritual strength isn't as complicated as we make it out to be. And some of us don't even recognize that we need to build our spiritual muscles. So 
that's another thing that I want to encourage and why I want to put this on my YouTube channel is when we're a spiritual being live in a human experience and as an intuitive empath I grew up in a very double standard very judgmental very intense world and I can't imagine how the empaths and the people that have psychic ability that don't understand it are feeling uh, in today's world where everything is so fast paced because it's it's a lot to learn how to be in this world in general so spiritual strength is just so important for me to teach all humans especially even our children so if you do tune in and follow me on a regular basis often my videos are not for anybody under 18 because I do enjoy swearing now and again and I do enjoy sometimes talking about things that children are really suffering from but they don't need to hear more of in our social media they need to hear it from you they need to have you sit down with them and talk to them about their struggles with their thoughts and their feelings in their heart and uh, I hope that my work here at the Cozy Cushion will help you all with that when it comes to grief being an empath as well because I like to share my own personal st stories and things that can really really help manage our anxiety because sometimes when we're intuitive beings that are very spiritual and we don't know where to place that sacred medicine and, and healing it can come very self-destructive and we be can become very irresponsible in caring for our bodies and we become very depressed and out of control and sometimes you know uh, very out of balance and I want to always encourage people that there's balance to be found no matter where you are what you're suffering from or what your challenges in life excuse me are so coming back to our breath and a reminder that your breath is your first responder. Your body is also your first responder when you wake up in the morning. And I just want to challenge you to breathing more deeply, exercising your lungs and your organs, and asking your body, I'm just gonna turn on my light here and see if it lights us up a little better. Well, there's, we're getting a little lighter, but just give me a sec. So when our breath is our first responder and we get up each morning, I encourage you to be grateful. Gratitude is such a healing energy. It's a very high vibration energy. And when we're grateful each morning and we take a big breath into our body and out from our body, we're really waking up our organs. We're allowing them to know that we're here, we're present, we're taking roll call for our responsibility for this vessel of a being that's gonna help us maneuver through uh, all the days that we're given here on Earth. So that's where the psychic medium part comes into, you know, my world here at the Cozy Christian is I'm always reminded uh, when it comes to those abilities that we're so regretful in life and we hold ourselves hostage to that regret and that shame at such a high level of frequency that it lowers our life energy. So as we carry it and even when we're willing to face and maneuver through our grief sometimes we st we still carry it in a way that allows our body to be hostage to itself and i really love helping people with that and 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 talking about how it feels when you know when we when we do that to ourselves and our loved ones when we hold our loved ones hostage for their their feelings and we're always telling them you know what 
they can do that's best for them and it becomes overwhelming for both parties you know and that's why I'm so passionate and compassionate about addictions and mental health is because I know so much of our mental health crisis here right now on planet earth is due to lack of nutrition it's due to lack of expression of one's true self it's lack of knowing where our spiritual responsibilities lie and being okay with being certain of who God is and what our source of our life is as well as the trauma spiral of people feeling as though they're broken that is a very big cement weight placed on our body when we believe that our trauma is to be carried and we don't allow ourselves to set it down even though it's difficult that's where our spiritual strength comes from is when we can allow our physical body to set that trauma in a different place and not carry it anymore because it doesn't always need to be relevant in our today's life especially if it's making us feel so incredibly sad and weighted down that we just don't like waking up in the morning we don't like being here it's inconvenient to be here and every day we wake up and we face our children we're angry, we're frustrated, we're lost. All those things are spiritual strength. And I like to invite you into your human body and your spiritual self and your physical presence in this sacred space to feel that those things can come into alignment they can be transformed into a higher frequency better place like chronic pain for instance can be dramatically improved with breath and breathing in and allowing to let go which you know friends I'm you know why I come here and teach this is because it's my not my strong suit I don't let shit go I keep stuff I keep things I keep relationships oftentimes far beyond the time that the relationship was probably due to expire because I still see as an intuitive empath both sides of those very dra dramatic relationships, you know, and, and gaps in between them can be so important. And building spiritual strength has taught for me the awareness that it exists, the awareness that I can now put emotions, thoughts, feelings, and relationships in little boxes and place them somewhere safe away from my physical body and my new life and my new willingness to move forward as a spiritual warrior woman in these times and it takes the weight off and it brings forgiveness because I've added prayers meditation and breath that help me process the more serious emotions of those very hard relationships that I've encountered in my lifetimes that have a physical effect on my body and my being and my emotional state you know um, and we've all had those relationships and I just want to remind you as I love to do that you're so vitally important beyond those relationships you are you know and sometimes our relationships don't encourage our greatness they don't encourage our self-love, our self-importance, our self-awareness. They don't nurture 
our spiritual side to live a good life that's at ease and at peace. Very few people I find even know what peace is. And part of what I love to teach and what I love to coach on is protecting our peace and spiritual strength can protect us and move us forward and as well very accurately use our intuition to protect our children in a positive way and not a negative way. Uh, and I've taken the school of hard knocks way to learn how uh, so many techniques that I love coming here and talking about because I see it help people and I love that it helps people. So lastly, A little help from my spirit guides. I'm going to talk about letting go of the blame of ourselves. So there's some people grieving, a lot of people grieving. Uh, the difference of this grieving that in the other grieving that we encounter is that we didn't have an opportunity to be authentic with our loved ones when they've passed during a period of time of, we'll say four years. And we've been blaming ourselves and, and we feel so ashamed of this that we're losing people and we need to help ourselves and we need to help each other. We need to be accountable and kind and strong in our own sacred space and bring light to our world. So today, uh, as a intuitive empath, I always do prayers when I do videos because I know whoever's tuning in is tuning into my energy. And as a light worker, I light a candle. And today's prayer is that we let go of the blame we let go of the shame. We let go of the resistance. We let go of being held hostage to our circumstance because we're blaming ourselves that it's our fault. Even if it is, we also know how if we allow ourselves to move through it. And that's so important. We don't want to get stuck entangled in it. We allow people to help us. I know friends, we allow people to help us. Now that doesn't mean they have to be all up in our space and all up in our grill and we, you know, that sort of thing. But when we find somebody or something that resonates with us and it engages us in the mystery and wonder of our lives, I want to encourage you to get up out of your seat. I want you to move through life and I want you to get back out there because when we've been stagnant, held hostage to our grief and our blame and our shame of so much of the world, friends, we've been blaming ourselves, our individual selves for the weight of the world. We've been blaming our government for all the things that are going wrong. And these are not true, per se. They only hold as much truth as we as a collective give them. Spiritual strength is about stepping back and holding space. So today I'm holding space with my candle for our farmers, our paramedics, our firefighters, our teachers, they deserve to our teachers. We have so many teachers, we need to honor our teachers. our doctors and our police officers. 
the people that are at the post office, getting our letters, our packages, and our messages. The backyard farmers, like myself, that are producing eggs, sharing them with their neighbors. We need to hold light in our homes. And we need to speak our own truth. We need to figure out who we are as individuals and enjoy that experience. That's how we build spiritual strength. And when we feel like shit, which so many of us do, we're tired, so tired. When we're feeling bad, we're not being careful with ourselves. We're not giving ourselves nutrients and water and breath and movement. We're not taking responsibility for feeling better. And it's a hard truth. But no matter where you are or what you have going on, you are the only person who can change your life. You're the only person that can save you and take you out of this place that you've put yourself in. Not feel shame and blame about it. Allow it to be okay. Pick yourself up in your darkness and you walk yourself to the white light. Even if you don't see that light, it's your responsibility to hold faith that somebody like me and so many others that have gone through dark nights of the soul get up and their purpose is to light a light and find you, allow you to join their tribe. So anybody that knows me, my cozy cushion is a dream that I have. It's a tribe of people that give a shit and care about things in life like farming, about policing, about our education, how we're treated as a whole and people and our culture. And we walk each other home. Unconditional love, unconditional light. Thank you for staying this long. It's been 27 minutes. So as I end this video today, thank you so much for tuning in on this Ruby Tuesday. If you haven't taken the step to do that thing that you've been planning, because you guys, I can feel it. I can feel that you guys are out there planning and thinking about your lives more. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for starting to give a crap about yourself Give a crap about what makes you special and unique in our world. And most of all, friends, your power to change your circumstance in your life from, you know, we've all been in shitty places. And today's world can take us to some vastly dark, intense places. But you have the capacity. It's not too late. It's not too late late. It's just not. Because one thing I know for sure is when we take an opportunity to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out, it tells our body a different story. Every time you do that more and more, every time you search for the light, every time you want things to be better, every time you have the wish of hope and faith that there's more to life than this bullshit fucking experience that you're having, you're actually inviting your angels, masters, teachers, and loved ones to help you achieve those little goals in your life that are really big things. You know, I'm a dream weaver. I'm a big dreamer. I do not dream little. And I don't get put off very easily when people tell me my dreams 
are going to be extremely hard to achieve, like my NBA court made out of timber beams and it's huge and it has the most amazing scoreboard and sound system and people are going to be able to come when I achieve this goal and they're going to be able to dribble and they're going to be able to shoot they're going to be able to play with their families we're going to have some really cool teams of firefighters and teachers and light workers and motivational speakers and psychics can you imagine having a basketball game completely one side of psychics with intuitive ability and the other side some gangsters some people that have had really rough edges and sharp you know qualities about their life but they want to come in and they want to play together I think that would be very exciting you know um, and I usually don't get knocked down very easily when people say, you know, the yeah but Natasha, you should really think about that. It could be this, it could be that. And, you know, you've got to be so true to your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. You need to give yourself the opportunity to move through your body, physically move, get out in the world, and enjoy those things that make you truly you and it's so different for everybody you know if you're a reader I encourage you to go to a library and get books if you're a musician or an artist I want you to get some materials raw materials do you know there's materials for artists everywhere and I need all the inspired artists to just create something okay Please, you know, move into your medicine, your sacred medicine to heal your own body, your own mind, your own heart, and your own spirit. Specifically to the moms and dads and people that have children living in mental health circumstances and addiction or separate, you know. I really want to encourage you, especially you, to become spiritually independent and responsible for your strength. There's ways to do that. I encourage breath work. There's Wim Hof certified instructors. Find yourself one. Go to a spa. Go to a yoga room. Yoga rooms are full of light workers just waiting to help you find the medicine and movement for your bodies. If you haven't gone to the gym and you're a gym rat, I encourage you to go to the gym. I encourage you to work out. I encourage you to lay down your yoga mat. I want you to stretch your arms up high. I want you to arch your back. I want you to breathe into your body slowly and gently. If you can't get up and stand up that's okay I still want you to breathe into your whole body from your toes to your nose if you don't got those toes that's okay breathe through your nose to what you've got going on allow it to be okay because you need healing too you especially need healing too breathing into your body helps your organs do their job if we're holding our breath if we're holding up ourselves hostage to not living not moving not stepping out of our comfort anxiety and depression It's very hard for the body to do the work. But if we can drag ourselves up and straighten up, put our chin up, our shoulders down and back. So because some of us are sitting and we're living like this, we're working like this, you know, and that really puts a heavy toll on your lungs. They, they will get thin as a result and your heart will get heavy. So we need to stand up. We need to relax. We need to wiggle our hips. The dancers that have not been dancing, people, I'm speaking directly at you. 
I need you to get up and dance. I want you to put on a song because if you're a dancer, the music's in your house, the records are there, the machine is probably ready, it might be a little scratchy, but I encourage you to do it. It's okay to self-medicate yourself with love and life and happiness, especially if it's uncomfortable. Anybody that's lived in addiction, happiness is like chalkboards, nails on a chalkboard. If you're in addiction and depression and anxiety, when you see and hear happiness, it's like, it's just, it, it's really rough. But it's okay and it does get better and easier when you understand that it's not the outside world that's having an effect on you, it's you having an effect on you. So I'm gonna sign off today because I am really feeling your love. I'm feeling your attention. I'm feeling so loved and I feel so connected to you that I think I could talk forever, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave you here with this. And I just want you to go forth. Know that you're loved by me. You can do this. You can do better. Even if happiness is incredibly uncomfortable, I want you to say, fuck it, because you remember what it's like to be happy. You remember what it's like to have your family in your life. You remember what it's like to be loved. Allow it to come back and know that you can change the story of it. It's not going to be the same because we're all in a different place now. So we need to remember that. You're not there. You're here now. With the hub. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please leave me a comment below because I love to hear from you and I like to know what you want to talk about, what you would like to hear about and those sort of things. So please leave all the things, all the things, you know, I, yeah, I really don't mind. Um, yeah. So just let me know. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I love that as well. So you take care, take good care of you. You are loved by me. And namaste.